In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what I believe to be the most efficient opening by far, at least when it comes to low rated games. And uh, with that, I'm referring to our beloved Karo Khan. Now, the tricky part when you're trying to learn the Karo Khan, especially as a low rated player, is that even though you try to learn the book moves, you know, the theory, what they teach you to play in courses, you will soon realize that while you jump in this player pool, they will do a lot of crazy kind of unexpected stuff. I mean, that could be compared to, let's say, we have to cook in like a foreign kitchen. You basically sort of know the basics, how to do the like actual dish, but it can definitely be very challenging when you don't really know what kind of ingredients you have or let's say uh, whether there are any available tools for us to use and in the end you just have to make the best out of the situation in order to survive so in this video i'm gonna be literally taking you from 1200 getting you up to 1300 playing this very opening while i'm explaining my thinking process as an international master playing six games against low rated players featuring very common openings for this rating range such as let's say one of the scariest setups the fantasy i'm gonna be teaching you how you can literally get a free win in uh, no more than seven moves then we're gonna be going over how to deal with the advance after that i'm gonna be showing you a very common mistake that they usually tend to make after the move uh, knight c3, which is the so-called classical variation. And for the three remaining games, we're gonna be sticking on to the most common variation for this rating range, which is the exchange. So we're gonna be seeing uh, kind of all the possible variations after they take, we're gonna have setups based on uh, what to do when they develop the knight to c3. And we're of course also gonna be dealing with uh, the positions that white goes for the pawn move to c3 which is like a little bit different but we're gonna be diving into greater depth uh, later in the video so please feel free to use the timestamps from the description be what you need and uh gonna be a bit of a longer video so why don't we just uh get started okay guys we're managing to get another Cairo Khan game against somebody that's rated uh 1400 so Oh, we get a fantasy. <laughs> Is it going to be a checkmate in seven moves? Are we able to trap this guy? Because I'm going to be sticking with uh, the main recommendation from my upcoming course on the Caro. And for this rating range, this variation is just like absolutely mind blowing. It is just insane. They take, we play bishop c5. And now if they know what's up, they have to play knight c3, but it's a very difficult move. They would normally go ed, from my experience, once they enter this path. If he plays, oh, he goes knight e2, never mind. It's like still kind of a bad move. Now if he plays knight c3, that is going to be having a pretty funny ending, or ed5. So he's very much in danger, just like this. Little construction in the fantasy is just like so deadly. You have no idea. If you haven't tried this out yet, my students are getting quick checkmates with this on a regular basis. It is incredibly tricky to deal with. So he played 92 just avoiding uh, bishop takes on g1. That's kind of what he was afraid of. But he finds bishop f4. Which is not going to allow the queen e3 checkmate. This guy definitely got mated in the past. You can tell by the way he's playing. But I mean, let's... <laughs> let's take his king out on a walk. We need to talk with him. We need to have a little chat. Okay, ideally... We want to get through there. So there's many ways you can do this. I'm just going to do DE, kind of threatening E3. So I guess he has to recap. FE, maybe we go for pin and then knight E6. So we can long castle or play rook B8. Let be assuming he has to take. Yeah, just get in the pin. 
pretty tricky to deal with. He may be playing h3. At this point, we can maybe just ignore it because we can make a stronger threat. Like, uh, knight a6 gonna be like, oh no, my bishop. Oh no, the poor bishop. Oh no, we can take. Because then we're planning rook d8. Okay, he's trying to hide. Man, this guy is like pretty clever. He's like really not falling for the traps, is he? Still, let's start rook d8, kind of forcing knight d2. I mean, look at him, he's playing white and he's just uh, literally fighting for his life. I mean, that's a good opening outcome for us, I would guess. But still need to get a checkmate. Oof, not easy. I don't want to retreat. I want to like keep up the tempo, but maybe, maybe not something very easy to do. It is what it is. Just going to play bishop e6. Then finish development, get castle, double up, and we win the game. It's like his king is messed up. We have easy development. If, if there is not like any fancy tactic, any direct win, fine. It is what it is. You got to have like sort of the mental strength of okay maybe we're not gonna get like a brilliant win so it is what it is they just get a normal win that's not too bad either i would say just develop maybe i could have done that too i don't think it really matters uh that much since castling is pretty sensible option Goes bishop d3. Let's increase the pressure on that bishop, shall we? Could do it with knight c5 or with knight b4. Not sure like which one is better. I would assume knight b4 because maybe we have ideas to take that and knight a2 as well. This creating huge threat of taking. Also idea to take with a rook, so then uh, we get a nice little fork. Goes queen e2, keeping an eye on the bishop. Could really look for that. Consider take okay this and maybe just knight a2 queen b2 could be a tactic. So bishop was not really doing a whole lot on f2, so that's why we read out and already have a threat of taking or maybe just taking there immediately. Just uh, man, look at this fantasy. It's I'm telling you guys, if you don't uh, know that you have to play knight c3 here so you can meet queen b6 with knight a4, you're just gonna get destroyed in the fantasy. So. I have a video where I go uh, more in depth, uh, let's say on the alternatives, if uh, white goes uh, ED or knight c3 or bishop e3, any weird moves like that that beginners may play, I have like a full long video on it, so you may want to check that one out if you haven't already. But still they will allow this uh, funny trap so often, it's just that <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous when it goes for... Uh, this little uh, move. Now, I am considering this move in case king takes uh, knight d3 is a funny double check and soon mate. He'll be forced to take back with a knight and then uh, I've got the option of uh, like going knight a2 and forcing rook a2 bishop takes. But he's got a lot of pieces so I don't think it's time to sack yet. Simple move, queen a5 hitting the knight should do the job though. No need to complicate if there is nothing uh, like clearly working in your favor. So if you don't see like a position clearly when you're having such a nice advantage uh, from like, let's say a positional perspective, like all your pieces are on nice squares, his position is kind of screwed anyways. You don't want to risk it for uh, anything that uh, may not be there. So yeah. Just take on a2, knight c3 to come, in case of king b2, queen c3, oh boy, we're starting to cash in pretty big boys, get ready, starting to cash in pretty big, so, fantasy does not uh, make it past move 20, but, uh, hey, credits to this guy for resisting for so long, you have no, no idea how many people would have done this, and, Get mated in seven moves. I'm telling you, everybody, 
every time I show this to someone that I'm having a lesson with, it's like half an hour later after the lesson, I just get a text with, oh, I got this string mate with a screenshot of the position. It's just absolutely mind blowing. You just have to try this variation against the fantasy. And I'm telling you, even if they play uh, like knight c3 here, I would no longer go queen b6 if you're playing people above 2000. People that go knight c3, they kind of generally know what's up and play knight a4. Against knight c3 in the course, I'm going to be focusing on knight e7, and I think black gets very decent compensation still. Line is a bit inferior, but uh, I still think it's like so interesting to try out. Um, and yeah, key mistake in the game, knight e2, queen b6, it's just much worse. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. Okay, managed to find ourselves another game. It's been a while since somebody played Advance. But there it is, finally. Okay. We're going to be sticking with the uh, move that I'm going to be recommending in my upcoming course on Chessable. And we're not going to be playing E6. Surprisingly, for a lot of you, maybe. We're going to be sticking with the simpler lines. Ah, F4. Funny guy. Funny guy. All right, guys, I am somewhat suspicious that this guy may be a cheater, but I'm going to play my repertoire. So now we'll see if my repertoire is bulletproof against the computer. Because F4 is definitely only, let's say, a real test of this variation, and it's played by uh, grandmasters in general. So I'm just going to be doing uh, normal stuff. Now bishop d3 is best move if he plays that kind of obvious cheater. But let's see. If h3, we're just happy to take. Bishop e3, e6, we have like knight f5 ideas that are quite interesting. Bishop e2 would be what I would expect most of the people to play because it's kind of like a natural move. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's just breaking the pin. So e6, expecting bishop e3, but then I believe, uh, yeah, knight f5, bishop f2, g5 would be a thing. I'm trying to like recall the proper move order. Actually, against this line, it might be a simpler fix. So I think it's uh, knight f5, bishop f2, queen a5 check. And then on c3, there is bishop takes on c5. So I'm just going to play it on the board so it becomes more clear as I explain. I'm going to go back. Man, I, 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 I never expected this opening to get played in 1300 rated games. Like, if you're going to be getting my course, I recommend you study this the least because they never play it in this rating range but okay maybe he just has a, a friend over that's helping him with the game who knows <sighs> imagine this guy actually being playing uh, together with his coach and they are like oh we do this body and the four is good and <sighs> we maybe somehow manage to beat them that would be pretty difficult to explain for the student. Okay, now the point is to check, and then on c3, bishop takes c5. b4 is typically a problem with a fork, but the key is that bishop takes on f2 comes with a check. So we save the piece. Super key detail. It might even be better now. Because then I'm going to go queen b6. And knight e3. Looming. Yeah, I think now just, uh, ooh, oh boy. Oh boy, what a disaster for opponent. Oh my. This is like, you know, <laughs> you get yourself a Lamborghini, but you don't have like a driving license. So you know how to play F4 and so on, but the rest is still a mystery. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what this was, but hey. Black is perfectly fine in this position, so didn't seem to be too much of a of a critical test. On f4, specifically knight h6 is important, and uh, yeah, critical mistake in this game was uh, the fact that uh, he played before. He's not supposed to play before. At this point, he's supposed to castle, and it's not that bad. But black is definitely very comfortable with uh, smooth development, get castled, and. All that. So uh, with that being said, I think we can really move on to the following game. Okay, everybody managed to get uh, another E4 game. We're going to be sticking with uh, our guns playing the Karo Khan. 
Let's see what opponent has in mind. Plays d4. And we do get to see another classical. Gonna be taking one e4. And then um yeah, gonna be going for the Tatagor in case he doesn't play anything weird like f3 where we can just take or just um f3 e3 is also an option there. Expecting them to take most of the times, and uh you could go for the old main line, but I like to stick with the Tata Kobo, which is kind of becoming the main line nowadays, even in top level grandmaster practice. So uh yeah. I mean, hey, got them just plays this, so it has to be good, right? Uh, in case he takes, we just stay back with the e one. They will take most of the times in case of knight g5. Uh, I mean, oh, bro. What? Did we play this guy? Why are they playing this move? This is like the second guy that plays this against me. It's so bad. I'm puzzled. I would expect takes and 9g3, but this guy plays 22. All right, I don't get it. Is this some kind of like new meta? Because I don't know. I mean, I did a lot of research for the Karo Conchistable course, but I haven't noticed 22 being that common. Even from working with like so many students in the Karo Con, I rarely see this 22 move, but hey, maybe that's a thing. You guys will have to let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to get the pin. Doubling up his pawns if possible, of course. Going to say no to that. And uh, ready to play e697. Okay, opponent just plays uh, c3. I'm not rushing with takes because it's not going to run away. There's no way to unpin. And if he unpins, then maybe we take. Oh. Okay. You have to wake up, guys, if you're just lurking or doing whatever. Uh, I don't know, doing your homework, cleaning the house. I mean, whatever you may be out, I mean, up out there. You have to really pay attention to this one because I have no words to express how common this move actually really is. It's, it's just like a big blunder. It's just like so common. He's just like a guy that sees a girl on the internet and for like their very first message, he decides to send a dick pic. This is simply how bad this position actually really is. So feel free, go ahead, pause the video <laughs> and try to find the best uh, move for black, which is most of the times a winning continuation. And uh, you may be wondering, okay, when you're saying gotta move the queen, no, take, win a piece, eliminate the defender, always go for the counter attack. Hitting e2, he takes there, we take his queen, take back, up a piece. Uh, so, yeah, it is that simple. <laughs> okay, if opponent. He's a bit of a better player. He has a better move to like, not instantly resign. So you can actually try to find that too, but he's not gonna find it. I mean, I'd be shocked if he does, but if he's got like the cold blood required, he'll play 23. And then our queen is attacked. We don't have a whole lot to do. We just have to move it and then he wins back. The piece were still like better, no question about it. But you see, he takes just like, a, like a little hopeless player that just blundered and we do have an extra knight okay just get developed trade all the pieces like trying to exchange rooks down the d file could have played bishop e7 as well but just figured this may be interesting now because uh it's an end game we actually don't have to castle because the king is a very useful piece uh in the end game so it's not like Having the risk of getting checkmated, so you may very well just keep it into the center. Just gonna go ahead and uh, initiate some trades. Gonna be taking on d1 next, most likely. In case he plays g5, I just sidestep. Could also play knight d5, of course. Both are like uh, um, completely winning, so. Uh, okay, he does that. Gonna stick with, I, with what I promised. Gonna be trading, playing rook d8. Now, he already has to concede a big part of the board, not good to give me a very straightforward win, so he just resigns. Yeah, that's simple. It's like, 
they play queen e2. First mistake, take one d4, free pawn. Then uh, the other key moment, he plays bishop g5, stop autopiloting. A lot of people would have just played queen there, maybe queen there. No, you gotta watch out for the counter attack. Why not go bishop takes on f3 and that just instantly wins the game. Uh, okay, I think with that, uh, we can just go ahead and uh, go for the next one. Managed to get ourselves a new game. Gonna go z4. Gonna be sticking with uh, our weapon here and uh, we definitely get to see the exchange variation with knight f3. So remember that against the check, uh, simplest is to play bishop d7, take with a knight. That's my favorite, what I'm gonna recommend. And uh, just go knight e6, if bishop b5, now we get bishop g4. So let's see, is this actually gonna translate into, normally this goes like bishop there and then they may uh, go for long castle. Very common uh, newbie line. Just gonna develop. If h3 always, especially with the knight on c3, it's good to take objectively. Below 1500, I think it's just safe to take in general on f3, like all the time in the exchange. Uh, just if you're playing tartar cover, don't take on f3. Never take on f3 in the tartar cover. So uh, besides that, it should be okay. I like to develop bishop there. Castle short, rook c8, a6, b5. Um, yeah, knight a5, knight c4. Typical mistake, people just rush playing queen b6 here. Uh, I could also throw in like h6 move, a loof, they normally go back, which is yeah, a bit of a pointless diagonal. It's not like they have any pressure because bishop is completely canceling it. Just rook c8 and very typical position. You can either get this structure with king on the king side or with king on the queen side. Anyways, black is much better. Uh, or in this case, it's not so obvious, but generally they just uh, run out of ideas now and uh, he may just play b4, which is kind of losing. So we can try to pause the video and find why uh, black is completely winning after b4. Hopefully he's not going to do that. Point is that on b4 there is little sacrifice and then this is why it's important to have rook on the open file. Opponent just plays queen d2. I'm just gonna stick with typical plan of advancing. Then I can go queen b6. Queen b6 is not like a bad move in itself, but it's just bad because it's blocking your fundamental plan, which is the minority attack. So the queen there, it's nice, yeah, attacking pawns, but it's just something concrete that maybe works sometimes, but when it's not winning a pawn, it's just kind of pointless. So you wanna have queen behind the pawns, typically. You don't need to start with the queen here. Perhaps I just prefer getting my knight. On to c4, which is going to make it super tricky for my opponent. So remember this plan. Whenever he's got knight on c3, knight a5, knight c4 is way stronger compared to, let's say, when he's got pawn on c3. Working there fine too, but here it's just way better. And we have all kinds of typical ideas to like already win pawns on the queen side, like simple idea to keep in mind, knight takes on a3. One takes, knight remains undefended. You could easily win a pawn like that. Maybe perhaps already on the next move. It could happen. You may play rook d3 just to have this defended, but still his position is definitely quite awkward to defend. I mean, you can just play something simple like queen b6 or... Uh, yeah, place b3 just at this point, the opponent was kind of running out of ideas, so... Kind of panicking, allowing bishop a3, could also just go knight a3. Knight a3 is quite cute. We have a nice move to come, which you guys need to find. How shall we proceed on uh, queen b2? I think black has a very nice way of getting like a pretty easy winning position. Okay, so opponent pretty clever. His point is if I take, he takes my knight, but I take his knight in the end. Sorry to interrupt guys, just a quick thing that I have forgot to mention while playing the actual game because I got distracted by my opponent's little surprising bishop takes on f6 move because you hear me mention that we have a pretty cute idea in case white would have gone for the move queen b2. And I have actually double checked it with a computer. It is actually not the best move, but I find this motive to be quite instructive of playing knight c2 and then 
Uh, because of the pin, we have lured the enemy queen onto a vulnerable spot, so we can play b4 and win back the piece. Black is, of course, much better. I would even go this far and say we're winning. Computer still kind of finds a defense with rook d3, and white is somewhat surviving. Not for long, I would guess. And just want to mention that uh, starting with b4, it is also completely fine. They most likely have to move the knight. Uh, and then we can continue with uh, simply picking up the city upon. So that was the only thing I wanted to mention and I will just uh, let you back with the video. So who's tricking who? That's the question. Definitely not worth ruining your king side structure. So gotta enter that. And I like the fact that he's getting a little bit of counterplay. We're gonna take, take, he takes a6 though. Oh, I think that's a bit too much. I think that's a bit much for him, but I need to calculate. He just kind of intuitively knight c2. He's gonna go like intermediate move, I take, and then he has to move the rook. But then I'm gonna have some kind of too much of a powerful uh, discovery. But hey, opponent, for 1200, I take my hat off. I don't have a hat, but. You get the point. I think he finds a lot of interesting tactics trying to survive because most people in this rating range will lose uh, by playing passive moves, losing the pawn, and then they get squeezed in the end game. This guy is like really losing like a real man. He's... If you lose, this is how you want to lose chess games. At least you want to try out some kind of trick. Opponent... Uh... If he defends against your tricks, you gotta respect the fact that he played better. So, don't get uh, mad or anything like that. He just gives up on the exchange because already not a lot he can do about it. And we're about to just pick up d4 pawn. Uh, if I play e5, he can sidestep. So, that's uh, not really uh, very clever. But we can. Just uh, prepare to double up, and the rook is also covering pawn on a6. And you will notice that soon he has no way of covering d4, and then position is opening up, we get to trade the rooks, then we'll try to trade his queen as well. And end games are just hopeless uh, when we have rook against bishop, so that is definitely the scenario that we are going after here. This is big frat, d5 just ed. Happy to enter these and uh, let's see how much uh, resistance will uh, opponent uh, try to put. Just gonna take it. Yeah, no need to try to do anything special. This is covered. He takes a6. Um, yeah, I can do whatever. Probably I don't want to lose this pawn. Queen b4 could be a move. Defending and attacking, you can see five as well. Definitely many candidates. Think before this, maybe queen one ideas. Just gotta watch out not to hang my rook somehow, and we should be all good. I think only try for him. Queen b six, but didn't really make much of a difference. Okay, maybe just rook c eight. Could try to infiltrate after king h2, queen f4, g3, queen f3. So, yeah, he goes there trying to meet queen e1 with uh, king there without losing the pawn, but uh, there is rook d2, he can check me. I think I'll just do rook c8, trying to get uh, rook c1 since bishop is covering d1. Do not forget, guys, that bishop do move backwards, so. Definitely don't want to allow that. It would be pretty embarrassing. I don't know why would you hang your rook like that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's got to play this, but at the very least, here, maybe win the pawn. Or queen there, queen c3, try to force queens off. This may be even more instructive. Okay, so bishop f1, just check him. Has to go now h2. And uh, there is check. Only move for him g3, and that will allow first mate. Because bishop is staying uh, in the way of the queen, so simply allows checkmate on the board, which forces resignation. So, okay, you may be wondering, this may look 
a little bit too simple. What was the decisive mistake? So we just got typical opening, very standard. This is the setup that, uh, yeah, we'll have uh, in the course. In some positions, if they rush bishop d5 and uh, definitely critical mistake, it's not like he really made a mistake. It's just his position was bad after knight c4, like say he does nothing, I'm already ready to play knight a3. If he takes, take the knight, up a pawn, just win the game. He's just... Made no mistakes, just the opening was bad. And then he had like some cute ideas. He should have definitely probably entered queen a3 position, which was still bad. Like here I could go rook c2, queen b5, and this is even pawns at least, but with this being super weak, like queen c7, queen c3, probably take this, f2 is a target. Computer evaluates this as minus two, and no question about that. Typical Cairo composition, only one pawn island, everything is defended. So, this is just a big positional advantage in itself. So, I guess he should have tried queen a3, but uh, he would have really gave us like a nice position still. So, uh, we can call that a de decisive mistake and uh, just move on to the following game. Okay, he managed to get another Cairo Khan game. Let's see what opponent has uh, in store for us. Looks to be the exchange variation, which is by far one of the most common and important variations that you need to understand how to play properly. Uh, he plays even with bishop d3, which is uh, unexpectedly, unexpectedly, man, that's a hard work. word, you should try it. <laughs> uh, it's definitely the best variation that I don't expect to see it very often for this rating range. And in my course uh, that is upcoming on Chessable, I'm going to be giving knight f6, bishop g4. However, I'm just going to be sticking with easy moves. So, knights out uh, on the natural squares, bishop to g4 if possible. If he plays h3, stopping that, we go g6, bishop f5, doing our best not to play with the locked bishop. So we do that, we go e6, bishop e7, castle, and uh, on h3. I think easiest for people that are kind of stuck in this rating range is to always take on f3. Uh, I have some rules that I like to use whenever to slide back and sort of get the optimal version, but... Easiest, get your pieces like this versus exchange on h3 take, castle, and try to play some type of minority attack. You're going to be getting uh, a reasonable game. Position, maybe slightly worse, but what do you care about mainly? You got to sort of set up boundaries, and I already know that uh, when opponent plays this move, we're going to have a pretty nice theme, so... Look on the open file, opponent, um, yeah, just preparing minority attack, want to go before, take that and make a weak pawn. He's like, for some reason, delaying that move, okay, I guess he just will play 95. I'm like really waiting for him to go there, and honestly, it's a pity that he doesn't, because that would have been uh, quite uh, instructive. On bishop h6, there's like a very nice way to defend against the checkmate which uh, we're going to go over in greater depth in the post-analysis game, but there is 98 move, which it is just an invisible move to people in this rating range. You have to trust me on that. Um, people just don't see 98 covers that. It's insane. It's just shocking to me. Nevertheless, opponent plays queen h4. And I think uh, this position may uh, already get into winning territory for us without even having to do much like at all. Because there is a strong knight e4 move, hitting the queen. Expecting him to go to g4, but maybe we can keep attacking it. Queen h5, g6 could be an idea. It's like, to me, absolutely insane that we have made no moves. I just did castle, rook c8, a6, b5. Opponent manages to get almost a losing position. 1300, by the way, so this is like 16, 1700 rapid. If you somehow 
think that uh, you're already some kind of uh, well-developed rapid player that is more to intermediate and uh, you're just watching these 1200 games for fun because you're already way above. No, you still suck. It's, it's good though to recognize that you suck. I suck too, like compared to players in <laughs> that are grandmasters or better than myself. That's the good thing. We all suck in this game of chess. Like, everybody sucks compared to Magnus. He's just the main reason why this never gets boring. It's always something to improve and learn. So, as long as you focus on that, you should have, uh, yeah, no problems entering this. I mean, <laughs> escaping. Uh, I meant to say, you should have no problems escaping this rating range. Uh... That's proven to work also. If you subscribe to the channel, it's giving at least 69 uh, points and uh, 10 inches to your penis. That would maybe be exaggerated. Five. Let's just say five. Uh, not saying you need it, but I guess it never hurts. Uh, anyways, we may be getting a little bit uh, sidetracked. So, uh, okay. I notice Queen is pretty lonely. It's like, I don't know, the Queen shouldn't be going out this late in the night. I think it's pretty scary. Now, unfortunately, there might be no way to punish it. And I just want to really reinforce this idea after you play 94, you usually want to support it with f5. So it is what I'm going to be doing now, just so we can take back and uh, open up the rook. Let's see what opponent uh, wants to do. Whenever you get knight on e4, you're not, you're not going to lose. I'm telling you, exchange variation, you play 94 f5. Never gonna, gonna lose uh, such position, so. Uh, if you do, just send me an email. I'll uh, talk to chess.com and uh, we'll send your rating back, I promise. Take free night. Uh, yeah, in case you didn't see what happened, uh, maybe this went a bit too quick. He was attacking his knight and for some reason he decided it was not a good idea to move it. I don't know, it could have been turning made in one and I would have probably had to give up the bishop and play queen d7 and still have a better position, but still. Just goes for this. He just goes this like hope, just thinking, oh, bishop g5, he takes, I take with a knight, I save my knight. But he's literally thinking, oh, no, I didn't move my knight. Oh no. Because what he's not doing, he's not watch out, he does not watch out for the one movers. See, they even on the defense have a hard time spotting this when it's like you either spot the one mover or you die. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the opponent was doing uh, in that position when not watching out for that. I'm just going to double up the rooks and... Uh, it is that simple. You literally have to do nothing. Just get a uh, safe opening, safe development in. And I already woke up move 14. This position play 94. Almost trapped his queen. Like, jeez. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, okay, rook f1. Defending against this. Uh, could maneuver the knight if... Uh, yeah, you're feeling uh, positional. Just gonna like kind of infiltrate. Funny threat, rook g3. Bet you haven't seen that one coming. My opponent didn't as well, so all good. I didn't see it coming either, I just tried to improve the rook, but then once you do it, a lot of cute opportunities may appear. You know, it's like... You focus on your own stuff, getting the best version of yourself, and cute things may appear. Not all the time, but just saying, boom, rook g3, how nice, how beautiful. What a tactical genius. No, it's no, no brilliant, no nothing, it's just... Improved pieces, tactic appears on the board. It's like, no rocket science. It's just very easy, simple stuff that you can do too. So, stop looking for excuses. <laughs> Threatening this on the next move. Rook is under attack. Takes there. Uh, yeah, he's threatening mate in one. Very scary, I must admit. Uh, not gonna allow the mate in one, and I think we should be fine. If you don't know, check will force him to make a move, so he's not in time to mate me. 
And then I just don't want to take this way because he may get some perpetual ideas. So I want to take it with the queen, hopefully. And then next step is if we can exchange his queen, just an easy win. He should stay there, but most likely will go there because he just wants to lose. Never mind, the opponent played a better move. Just gonna take. If he trades, it's like resigning, so he should keep queens on the board and hope for some kind of perpetual. That's his best uh, practical uh, chance at this point. Goes there. Uh, that is not a check. So uh, I'm not afraid. Uh, what else? I could maybe do e5. e5 looks like a nice little tempting idea. Okay, maybe check him. I want to get a clever queen trade. I'm just gonna start checking. You know, it's like <laughs> Patser may start very well to randomly check. It is what it is. Let's give a check. I don't know. Let's see where this will take us. Give another check. Just acting like we don't know to win. Check. Hoping to get queen trade in. Okay, he stays away from the queen trade. Like this guy, this guy knows what's up. You gotta really respect the trickery of my opponent. Okay, now. Time to be a little bit more serious and uh, watch out for any perpetual. Still pretty sure we should be okay after queen e4. I think you should try maybe a move like queen c7 or queen d6. Fading is once again similar to resignation. Checking is not a thing because knight covers it. Yeah, queen d6, good uh, practical try. I can check him, check, check. Goes there, check. Just looking whether there's any forcing way of trading queens, which I don't actually see. My knight is under attack, which is not nice. It is definitely not nice because knight is almost trapped. That's pretty funny. Okay, I just gotta start checking again, kind of out of panic a little bit. <laughs> Could have played a little bit better along the way on the conversion, but hey, I think this is interesting because uh, messing up a winning position could be relatable to some of the viewers at least. So here's how to come back from that. Okay, we stumble into a win apparently. Just take his pawns, just randomly check, and then <laughs> figure it out eventually, I promise. <laughs> Okay, so I could take this and defend the knight, which is, I would assume, safely winning. Like, I don't think he has any perpetual. That just doesn't look like a perpetual mechanism to me. Could also check. But yeah, I think it's checking more. It's not making a whole lot of sense. Just ready to enter this. Could play king g7 as well, by the way. Yeah, no, I think this move is fine. Just, uh, he's gonna check me, I guess. Play 97, no checks, and uh, we should be Gucci. He can trick me whatever, the king is gonna like hide eventually, it's very rare that he could escape, uh, yeah, just 97, I see no checks now, so, it doesn't mean that if I see no checks, there are no checks, but, knight's pretty good at covering a lot of squares, especially when he only has one attacking piece, um, and yeah, he takes, now we no longer have issue of the hanging knight, so, uh, it would be relatively simple. To win. Queen end games can be tricky, but I think at this point we can just start pushing. It's like normally you should be able to have a way of uh, forcing a queen trade. It's pretty strange that in this game we didn't have such opportunity, but we can run it down at this point and uh, definitely it's entering the easy win territory right now. He's going to check. I'm going to go maybe king g7. Could we e6 too. King closer to the middle is usually the way to go in these uh, queen end games. So if he checks me, maybe... Yeah, I actually would have probably blocked there, but... Uh, so yeah, here. Could also go up. Could also play like queen d5. I think I like queen d5 and uh, he checks me there, but knight f5. And I think no more checks because we cover both of these squares. Yeah, covering these. Wow, we're getting pretty tricky end games. <laughs> However, the way we got a winning possession was definitely quite uh, easy and convenient. Uh, the only move not to play in this position is queen takes on a2 because you lose the queen. 
So please uh, stay away from that. I think I'm just gonna go 93. Threatening mate. And uh, I might play that move anyway, just to get rid of the queens next. Once again, I don't really think he has any perpetual type of motives. I'm not even calculating. I'm just trying to keep my pieces defended here. Uh, yeah. We'll try to hide this way. He's gonna get a bunch of checks, but... You know, this is like how the queen end games are working out. It's like... You cannot jump uh, in the pool without getting wet. Or... You know, if it's an empty pool, good luck with that. But you get the point. <laughs> the king c7. Once again, everything is defended. <laughs> my king is pretty free to do whatever. I'll try to zigzag my way. Um, yeah, king b7 actually. What is the next check? I don't see it. I'm ready to play maybe queen g2 next. I quite like uh, showcasing the idea of winning these games. Only because we have an extra pawn. That's a hanging queen. But just for you guys, we're going to be going for the end game. <laughs> so I could have finished that in a move, but I want to show that these end games are how you're going to be winning most of your games. It's like, I think it's very similar to, you know, this is actually maybe well surprised a lot of people what I'm about to say, but I think that's the problem of most low rated players that just get hooked and they get into chess. And I don't know, they've seen some kind of brilliant game by Mikhail Tal or by Paul Morphy in the 19s. So uh, they think, oh, chess is so beautiful, so brilliant, and uh, these kind of things. Well, in fact, it's just like when you watch too much pornography. It's just giving you a false impression of uh, what sex actually looks like. So, you know, in both cases, it just kind of gives you the <laughs> wrong impression that uh, it can last for <laughs> more than two minutes. So, no, this is not how you win ch chess games. You don't win by getting a brilliant checkmate or stuff like that. Have one more pawn than your opponent, beat him in the end game, and uh, you're going to be winning hundreds of points while being consistent with it. So, managed to get the checkmate promotion. Critical mistake for this game. Uh, yeah, critical mistake. First thing, bishop h6, threatening mate. I would have played knight e8 and then king h8, so a lot of people, for some reason, this is just invisible to them. I don't really know the bar, why, why the bar is so high. It's like nothing special going on. It's just an even position, as you can see here by the engine. Just kind of a crazy bar, I guess. Um, and I already have like so many games. I go king h8, threatening to take, and then they just forget. They, they think, like, in their brain, the bishop is now immortal on h6. It's like, uh, just cannot touch it. And then you just take, and they're like, oh, I lost my bishop. And they go ahead and play queen g7. And they're like, oh, I lost my queen too. God damn it. So, <laughs> not literally, but once they lose a piece, they generally play much worse. So, first mistake, that, not playing bishop h6. Critical mistake, however, queen h4, poor move. You can look, if he plays whatever, he's like slightly better. I told you it's not like an amazing position, but hey, you get your own play. For having to know no Fiori at all, I wouldn't be complaining here if I was you. So you get a little bit of counterplay on the queen side. And when he allows knight e4, I think he's in trouble. Play f5, support the knight, very difficult for opponent to play. Takes on e4, he's already under huge pressure. And by the way... We played all of these, could do it every single time, it's like nothing special. Against the exchange, you can use this setup. So, should have played 9g5 here, and we would have gotten this position, which, hey, I think it's quite pleasant for us. Great queens, maybe getting into the endgame. I think we're doing well. After he plays bishop g5, and we get to win a piece, black is completely winning, so... We just went for kind of the unnecessary long 
conversion over there. Like, man, this was the game with the brilliant Rook G3 move. It took a while to convert. Longer than expected, but hey. Uh, I hope you guys uh, learned a thing or two about the uh, Queen Endgame. So, um, with that being said, I think we can really move on to the following game. Okay, everybody managed to get another Karo Khan game. And uh, when opponent plays Knight F3, I typically expect the ED5 move. However, uh, they can also play E5, which is kind of like a common sideline that they play, which is more or less transposing back into the advanced variation. We had already a bunch of games like that in the rating climb uh, in the past. So I recommend going Bishop G4 there. Uh, yeah, just gonna stick with takes. Uh, in case they check, by the way, very common move. My favorite way of blocking, and I think the easiest is Bishop D7. You can block with a knight, that's fine, but this is just the easiest and I noticed taking with a knight works uh, quite uh, well there. So I'm just gonna develop pieces like this. Bishop out on g4, e6, bishop e7, castle, rook c8, do minority attack. So um, I think below 1500, easiest is to meet h3 with takes all the time. Uh, if there will be no bishop on b5, uh, I think on h3 we're supposed to... Slide back is the optimal play, but uh, somebody that is low rated, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. You can always take, and it's not going to be a disaster. You may get a slightly worse position, but considering the fact that you have to know zero theory, it is not the worst possible outcome of all time. Uh, yeah, h3, here definitely superior is to slide back, but I'm just going to be taking, trying to keep it super simple, and then... Um, I could definitely play bishop d6, but just because in a lot of these games, opponent will definitely threaten you with this quite annoying uh, bishop pin. I think it's nicest to have bishop e7, so you never have to worry about that. And then we just try to go for some uh, typical queenside play. So I'm going to get rook onto the semi-open file. Always. People just forget to do this move enough. <clears throat> and uh, what is the plan next? You may be wondering. A6, B5. By the way, also, important move, 94. I could have perhaps played it first, because now he can play bishop d3 and stop me. That would be best move for him. However, would expect uh, any kind of bishop move where I could just go A6, B5, B4. But when you can, 94 is generally best move. Follow it up with F5 on the very next move, and... It is going to be very annoying for your opponent to deal with. I'm telling you. He may just play bishop d3, f5, he takes, and he just loses a piece. <laughs> it's simply like how powerful this plan is. And I'm telling you, if you get knight on e4, supported with f5, it's just like gg. They... <laughs> Trust me, there's no way you can get in trouble with that. But there's like any takeaway from this video, exchange variation... Put the knight in the middle. It's not like you can always do that. It's, of course, just... Uh, yeah, okay, am I just calling him out for that? He's going to take and we get a winning position? These guys always take, so... Good chance uh, this will happen. And uh, we always take back with the f-pawn. And we win a piece. It's going to be double attack. Hope he just doesn't take because that's not going to be very interesting. If he doesn't take, we may continue with bishop f6, g5 type of ideas. This is usually... How we want to expand on the king side. So I hope he just does not take because that will just kind of give us an easy win. Which will happen in a lot of your games, I expect. Um, definitely common move for them. They just have a hard time living with that knight on e4. It is just like so annoying. It's just like your boss that's uh, kind of breathing in your neck while you're working. So it's just kind of super annoying. You just kind of maybe want to like... Kick him in the face. It's all right. I think we may be getting a little bit sidetracked with that. Uh, knight e5. Just he has annoying knight. Get rid of it immediately. Maybe taking with the bishop. Then we can just try to get rid of that as well. Uh, so mm, takes with a pawn. Not as good because that's like a nice square. So you want to have. A piece onto the output, so obvious mistake. Now, 
because we have a uh, kind of finished development. All of our pieces are out. Still, we want to look for improvements. Now, everything is kind of on a decent square, except bishop on e7, which is fine. But I feel like it could be improved. And definitely this comes to mind. Putting some pressure while also maybe opening up queen path. <clears throat> be tempting for him to take but once again this and get him in trouble so i think for him best move maybe going bishop e3 is he gonna play that i don't know if i had to guess i think he'll play uh i think he might actually play it yes i think he will play that yeah bishop e3 there it is we can trade i can also kind of ignore going queen h4 which may be a bit of a better move because it's making a bit of a silent threat of taking and then we have queen takes on f2. So he needs to be ultra careful with that. He may be taking where we can take either way. Probably just taking it with the rook, keeping the annoying knight in his face. So um, Let's see. G3, big mistake. Oh, queen f3, defending. All right, queen f3. Simple move would be taking, expecting him to take back with the rook. I also have some like knight g5 kind of little ideas. Trying to be annoying with that queen. I mean, he can ultimately take if he really wants to. Now the question is, who is that opposite color bishop's positions going to benefit? I think it's us because this bishop is like... Highly restricted by our pawn. So this is quite annoying. Killing the queen. Queen g3, I think. At least 10 games are nice. And uh, he gives up the, the bishop. And now this is super important. Middle game, opposite colored bishops. If it's end game, opposite colored bishop means draw. If it's middle game, side who's attacking wins. So whose side... Uh, I mean, <laughs> how can you figure out which side is attacking? Well... Mainly comes down to how active uh, the bishops are. And as I was saying, I feel like these guys are restricted by my pawns, while bishop is quite nice. Nicely placed. Uh, is it going to be enough? I hope so. I don't know for sure. It's just my intuition at this point. Just going to play g6, trying to make some small improvements. Uh, if he offer queen straight, I think I'm going to keep. Endgame is once again... Uh, Playable, but not uh, really our main asset in this position. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to go all in on the activity. Like, he should definitely at some point maybe consider ideas like C4. I'm kind of having my money on the fact that he's just going to play passive and we just get to squeeze him slowly. Maybe that's a little bit silly of me to believe, but... Um, these guys in this rating range have a pretty bad habit of uh, playing super passive so uh you know <laughs> i think it's uh yeah he, he plays queen g3 as expected there is option of taking and then he takes with the king can play that end game but i think keeping may be highly more rewarding he also have maybe a four idea so he perhaps should play f4 himself i think he should really play f4 and maybe we don't even have uh like a better position at all, maybe just equal. But his last move is hinting towards c4, so that's why else it's not making sense to place the rook on that square, so... It's pretty easy to predict what they're gonna do now. We can either try to stop it or let them play that idea if it's not so clever. Problem is I don't really have a way to actually stop it. So, yeah, I'm considering throwing in f4. It's just like, he plays queen there. How do I continue? Not like very obvious. But I think I've got a little bit of an idea. I mean, I'm making the assumption he's going to go there, keeping the pawn protected, and then I want to go queen h4. And we're attacking this. He's going to have to play rook e2. Maybe I go king g7 and... I feel like at some point, he may be quite tempted to offer queen trade. 
And I feel like, I don't know, maybe we can try to take him in these end games. We can actually maybe checkmate him even. I mean, I may be going a little bit insane with that little statement, but... If let's say all the pieces of the puzzle come together, uh, we may be able to checkmate him there. Now, still he wants this, so shouldn't uh, like fully ignore it. Could maybe go g5, trying to make the argument that this is coming one day. Like g5, queen g4, takes, king g7, c4, h5, takes, rook h8, cd5, takes, king g1, rook h8, <laughs> he plays g3 and then we go f3 and that's mate. Okay, is this gonna happen? Kinda doubt, but... Hey, how cool would that be? He needs to play queen there. I feel like g5 could be a bit scary for him, so I'm like... Oh, never mind, just blunders. The... Is it actually a blunder? It is not obvious that it's a blunder, like fg hitting the queen, he has to take with the queen. So... Yeah, it is not really a blunder. Not as I thought. I could still go back. That's a candidate. Or you can take, queen takes, and then... Maybe there's like bishop f2. It is actually blundering a pawn. So it can kind of technically be called a blunder. I think we just go for... It's not like a lot, but... <laughs> I think in this position, a pawn is pretty important. You know what they say? A pawn is a pawn. I uh, just gotta go bishop f2, rook f2. We can take back because of the x-rays. But I will try to highlight the variation that I was kind of calculating in the post-analysis game tab. Because I think it's quite likely to happen. Like he played g3. I think maybe a different game he would have gone queen g4. And there are decent odds we could play for checkmate. Yeah, now it's just a pawn up end game. Uh, this with bishop g3 could be interesting to play for activity. Computer may not like that idea, but I think it uh, can be tricky for him. Because bishop there will probably win me e5, while I can double up and then play rook f2 and sort of win these pawns. More of like a dynamic decision at this point. If you take with the bishop as a simple way of thinking not a mistake like totally do that okay opponent just gets flagged but i think position was not looking very pretty like minus two and yeah like for those of you that are a little bit confused on the variation i was referring to i was hoping like he'll play here i think best for him is to play c4 yeah to do some kind of play but it's not easy to play c4 when like your opponent may be doing this your queen is almost trapped. So I was thinking he tries this. And I go for that. King g7. Making room for this. He plays c4 now. And I was considering h5. In my calculation, I forgot about the fact that there is bishop g6 little move. I was thinking he may do this. We go check. Only move. We do this. Threatening mate. So he cannot take the bishop because of mate. He can play g3. Notice that he cannot run away because the rook is there. So he can play g3, like make Luft. But then there is f3. This is a mate. So he can take, but that's checkmate. Uh, so this is the line I was having uh, in my mind here. So like seven moves. It's not like a lot because everything is forced. So when it comes to chess calculation, the more forcing it is, the easier. So... Um, if the position is pretty messy and it's hard to kind of see in advance, you shouldn't really go much deeper than three moves because it's generally kind of pointless. But here, it was this kind of line where you can. So apparently, if I want to really do this, it might be better to start this way. If I want to kind of go all in on the attack, to do it like this. Hmm. Yeah, but apparently I'm not in time because... 
you know, if I would have another tempo, my rook would be on h6, this would work, but I'm not in time to double up. So, um, yeah, objectively, opponent could have, let's say, defended against this if he plays queen g4, computer thinks uh, just trading and uh, then doing whatever is leading to an equal endgame, maybe it's just slightly better for black, but uh, yeah, I think we're always on the nicer side. So, uh, yeah. Main takeaway from this video, uh, I mean, from the game, whenever you can, get your knight to e4, play f5. A lot of your opponents, you have no idea how many of them will take. You win a piece because of this double threat. So uh, with that being said, I think we can really move on to the following game.